Hello everyone, Michael Shamblum here, and welcome to another landscape photography vlog. And this time I'm in California shooting the Super Bloom, and I'm really excited for this video because there are some amazing things to shoot right now. So I'm going to talk you through some of the techniques that I use for wildflower photography, and we're just going to have an adventure and see what we can find. This is amazing. So as usual, I've got the classic 100 to 400 lens and I'm using it to really compress the hillside in the distance with all of these colors. I mean, I'm seeing a mix of vivid yellows, oranges, purples. This is what it looks like a little bit wider, showing the entire hill at about 100 millimeters. But if I zoom in here, I mean, just check that out. Can create all these different shapes like right here there's a bit of a v shape going on if i zoom this direction i can get some of those oranges Ooh, i think i found a really cool composition here let me show you this one so check this composition out you've got the kind of rolling shapes to the hills a little bit of that orange towards the middle mixed in with the bluer tones that are going diagonally through the frame and then all those yellow ridges getting lit up that's amazing So here is my first version of that composition, and I absolutely love the different colors here with those splashes of oranges mixed in with the little bits of purple, and of course those giant sections of vivid yellows. Now this image was pulled back a bit to include the sky, which I do think worked pretty well for this image, especially with some of the cloud texture up above. But now let me show you another version of this composition. It's interesting how zooming in a little bit further can completely change the look of the photograph. Suddenly losing the context of the sky really makes this image a bit more abstract. Now if you followed the channel for a while you know I tend to gravitate more towards these abstract images, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on these two. Which version of this composition do you like more? Do you enjoy this zoomed in version where you lose the sky, or do you like the inclusion of the sky and the rest of the hill there? Please let me know in the comments. After photographing these ones, I decided to zoom into the hillside even further to see if I could pick out little details. It is just amazing how vivid these colors are. And I don't really know if the photos are doing justice to just how beautiful this is right now. Oh wow, that's a nice composition right here, especially with the shadows moving overhead. There's a bunch of shadows creating some different dappled light here. So here are the three images that I just shot, and I felt like as standalone photographs, they didn't work as well as I thought when I was actually composing in camera. Maybe they were almost a little too abstract and simple. But then I decided to take all three images and display them together as a triptych. Sometimes the story you might want to build through your photography isn't meant to be shared through a singular image. That's why we put together projects and collections. Maybe the series is displaying different subjects of a place, or different contexts to the composition, maybe a wider scene with a telephoto scene, or even just like this, where I wanted to show the different patterns and colors and make the whole scene work a little bit more symmetrically. And so if you haven't tried this before, I highly recommend it. 
Look through your images and see how they display together. See if any of those photographs would work together as a series. After photographing that beautiful hillside, we decided to drive a little bit further in elevation and get into the hills. And what I mean by we is I was actually with my friend Matt, who is another very talented photographer and brought his awesome dog with him, which definitely made this adventure a lot more enjoyable. Before I show you what I captured from the hill, I thought it would be nice to switch it up a little bit and show you an ultra-wide composition that I shot a little earlier in the morning. So this image is a completely different style from some of the more intimate shots I was just sharing with you, but these ultra-wide compositions are a lot of fun to photograph. I used my Nikon 14mm, which I adapted to the Sony camera, and this allowed me to get really close to the flowers to completely change their perspective and give them a lot more emphasis in the frame. Then I used that nice gnarled tree in the background as kind of an anchor point, and of course having some beautiful cloud texture in the background that was then distorted and accentuated by the wide-angle lens just really brought everything together. So in order to get everything in focus, I did have to do a bit of a focus stack here, so I shot five photographs from that closest flower all the way to the background, and then I stitched them all together to get this final version. Wow, it is unreal out here. So we drove up this little mountain and you get these sweeping views of all the little ridges, with all the wildflowers out there, patches of yellow, some patches of orange, and I can see some mountains out there in the distance to the south. I think those are the LA mountains. It's really, really nice to see this from a different vantage point. And as usual, I'm using the 100 to 400 lens, trying to get those close-up telephoto perspectives because I wanna take all of this and really just simplify it. You know, it's worth just taking time to enjoy it, hang out. I've been shooting for hours now and I'm not entirely sure if I've come up with a composition, but the more time I spend really playing around and looking for stuff that's interesting, I, I feel like the better chances I have of coming away with something really cool. So unfortunately up on this ridge, some of my telephoto perspectives just really weren't coming together the way I had hoped for. So I decided to pivot my attention and pop out the drone to see if I could get some shots from above. And here's how that turned out. It was amazing to see this spot from a completely different perspective and really simplify some of the shapes in this hillside. Some of these images started to look more like paintings to me than actual photographs. The light is getting a little bit lower, so the shadows are changing and different shapes are being revealed. And you can see these really thin lines with the wildflowers. These thin lines of yellow matched with the shadows underneath. It is really beautiful. And uh, I have not pulled the 100 to 400 lens off my camera. This has been just basically like an entire telephoto wildflower shoot. And uh, there, I mean, there is wide angle compositions here, like getting right into the flowers. But the only problem is it's a little bit windy. So the flowers are swaying every second or two. and it just makes it so hard to get these focus stack shots when, it, when there's wind. So I'm having a little bit more fun keeping it simple, finding the patterns in the distance. Got the polarizer on here to get a little bit more contrast in the, in the scene and in the sky and it's just a good time. So one thing I thought I should mention, and it's something I probably shouldn't have to mention, but unfortunately I, I kind of feel like I do. <laughs> um, there's really only one rule 
in my opinion, for wildflower photography because just don't trample the flowers. <laughs> that's really the only thing. It's really that simple. Um, I know most of you watching probably aren't the type of people who are going to go trample a wildflower field, but it's been interesting during the super bloom to photograph all these different places and see a lot of people just like trampling all over the fields and, and ruining them. And uh, it's a little bit unfortunate. And as photographers, I feel like you know, we're here to capture the beauty of these places and we should feel the need to not only respect these places, but also protect these places. Um, so if you do go shoot wildflowers, just be careful. Try not to trample any flowers. If you're with friends, tell them to do the same. And as I've been talking, the light has changed. The shadows have shifted a bit. It looks a lot softer right now. So even though the sunset was beautiful and the golden light on the wildflowers looked incredible, I, to be honest, didn't feel like it translated that well in camera. I thought that that bright daylight with the partial cloud was way more interesting and gave a lot better color contrast to the flowers in the hillside. Sometimes I feel like when I photograph wildflowers, my images don't always do justice to just how incredible the experience is. I mean, the vivid colors, these beautiful hillsides, the adventure, and I knew that going in because that's sort of the thought that I've had for a lot of my previous wildflower shoots. And so besides that one wide angle shot that I shared with you, I tried to just have fun and make something a little different here. And now let me show you some of my favorite aerial perspectives that I captured throughout the day. So overall, this was just an awesome experience. I want to thank my friend Matt for joining in on the fun. And yeah, when it comes to wildflower photography, there's a lot of different ways of photographing it. You can go for a more traditional approach and just show the beauty of the landscape. You can try some creative techniques with the wildflowers, like telephoto isolation or aerial perspectives, or you can emphasize the individual flowers with some wide angle perspectives. But with whatever you choose, just make sure to bring your allergy medication. With that, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.